Anyway, my obeisances to any and all devotees who may be um, participating in this Bhagavad Gita class. I give you my obeisances. Um, and I hope everybody is well and strongly situated in Krishna consciousness. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Gopi Janavalava Girivara Dari Jaya Gopi Jana Bhava Giravara Dari Yashoda Nanda Nagraja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nanda Nagraja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Bhavara Chari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vahava Girivara Dari Yashoda Nanda Nabraja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nanda Nabraja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Baba Girivara Dari Yashoda Nanda Nabraja Jana Ranjana Yashoda Nanda Nabraja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Babu Pada, Babu Pada, Jaya Babu Pada, Shila Babu Pada, Babu Pada, Babu Pada. Babu Pad, Jaya Babu Pad, Jaya Jaya Guru Dev, Guru Dev, Guru Dev, Jaya Jaya Guru Dev. All glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the lotus feet of Sri Sri Guru and Garanga. So we're reading tonight from the Bhagavad Gita as it is by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Srila Prabhupada. Om Gyanat Timuranda Shagyanat Gyanat Salakaya Chaksvamali Tamina Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovishtam Stapitami Nabhutale Swamrupa Kadai Mayam Dadati Swapadantikam 
Vande Ham Shiguru, Shi Uta Parakamalam Shigurum, Vaisnavam Sha, Shi Rupam Sagwajatam, Sahagana, Vagunatam, Vitams Tam Sajivam, Savadwaitam, Savadutam, Parijana, Sahitam, Krishna Satanya Devam, Shi Vada Krishna Paran Sahagana, Valita, Shi Vistapam Vitams Cha. Hey Krishna Kamana Sindhu, Dina Bandu Jadapate, Gopesha Gopika, Kanta, Radha Kanta Namos Dute, Tapta Kanchana Gorange, Radi Bindavaneshari, Vishabhanu Sutta Devi, Pranamami Hari Pray, Vancha Kapya Darubias Cha, Kripa Sindhu Vi Evacha, Patita Nam Pavanebio, Vaishnavio Namo Namaha, Shri Krishna Say Tanya Prabhu Nichananda, Shri Advaita Gadadara Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama <coughs> Excuse me Rama Rama Hare Hare So we are reading from chapter 5 entitled Karma Yoga Action in Krishna Consciousness. And in this chapter, it begins with uh, Arjuna um, asking Krishna, trying to clarify um, the difference between renunciation and action. Because um, Krishna had talked about this before in chapter three. And he, or at that time, Arjuna was also confused about uh, between the two, renunciation and, and action. He wanted to know which is better, but still um, he again gets confused um, in this, in the beginning of this chapter and um, about Krishna's simultaneous, uh, his simultaneous emphasis on karma yoga and uh, renunciation, sannyas. So uh, I'm reading from text uh, 16. Gyanena tu taragyanam yesam nashitamat manaha teisham adityapajyanam prakasayatitat param. Gyanena tu taragyanam yesam nashitamat manaha Teshama ditya vajkayanam prakasa yatitat param. Yanina tu taragyanam yesam na sitamat manaha. Teshama ditya vajkayanam prakasa yatitat param. So the word for word is, we'll do the word for word. Yanina by knowledge. Tu but. Tat that. Agyanam, nations. Yesham, whose. Nashitam is destroyed. Admanaha, of a living entity. Tesham, there. Adityavat, like the rising sun. Yanam, knowledge. Prakasayati, discloses. Tatparam, Krishna consciousness. Translation and purpose by Srila Prabhupada, Jai Srila Prabhupada. When, however, one is enlightened with the knowledge by which nations is destroyed, then his knowledge reveals everything as the sun lights up everything in the daytime. Purport. Those who have forgotten Krishna must certainly be bewildered, but those who are in Krishna consciousness are not bewildered at all. It is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvam Jnana Pravena, Jnana Gni Sarvakamani, and Nahi Jnana Su Sad Prisham. Knowledge is always highly esteemed. And what is that knowledge? Perfect knowledge is achieved when one surrenders unto Krishna, as is said in the seventh chapter, 19th verse. Bahunam Janmanam Ante Jnanavan. Mam Papadyate. After passing through many, many births, when one perfect in knowledge surrenders unto Krishna, or when a, one attains Krishna consciousness, 
then everything is revealed to him as everything is revealed by the sun in the daytime. The living entity is bewildered in so many ways. For instance, when he unceremoniously thinks himself God, then he actually falls into the last snare of nations. If a living entity is God, then how can he become bewildered by nations? Does God become bewildered by nations? If so, then nations or Satan is greater than God. Real knowledge can be obtained from a person who is in perfect consciousness. Therefore, one has to seek out such a bona fide spiritual master and under him learn what Krishna consciousness is. For Krishna consciousness will certainly drive away all nations as the sun drives away darkness. Even though a person may be in full knowledge that he is not this body, but is transcendental to the body, he still may not be able to discriminate between the soul and the super soul. However, he can know everything well if he cares to take shelter of the perfect, bona fide, Krishna concept, spiritual master. Krishna. Mm. This is saying 90% of my GBC is, my gigabytes is, okay, let's see if I can get through this class before it expires. Therefore, one has to seek out a, a bona fide spiritual master and under him learn what Krishna consciousness is, for Krishna consciousness will certainly drive away all nations as the sun drives away darkness. Even though a person may be in full knowledge that he is not this body, but is transcendental to the body, he still may not be able to discriminate between the soul and the super soul. However, he can know everything well if he cares to take shelter of the perfect bona fide Krishna conscious spiritual master. One can know God and one's relationship with God only when one actually meets a representative of God. A representative of God never claims that he is God, although he's paid all the respect ordinarily paid to God because he has knowledge of God. One has to learn the distinction between God and the living entity. Lord Sri Krishna therefore stated in the second chapter of chapter two, verse 12, that every living being is individual and the Lord is also individual. They were all individuals in the past, they are individuals at present, and they will continue to be individuals in the future, even after liberation. At night, we see everything as one in the darkness, but in day, when the sun is up, we see everything in its real identity. Identity with individuality and spiritual life is real knowledge. So there's a lot of points in here that, you know, that. We could discuss this for a long time, this particular verse, because there's so many points in here. But the point that I would like to focus on is um, what's what stated, what's talked about in the translation of the verse. When, when, however, one is enlightened with the knowledge by which nations is destroyed, then his knowledge reveals everything as the sun lights up everything in the daytime. And uh, so I'll just go through some of the the purport, like. It's saying here, those who have forgotten Krishna must certainly be in bewilderment, but those who are in Krishna consciousness are not bewildered at all. So as I was reading this first sentence, um, I was thinking about how now the whole world is in bewilderment about what's happening, you know, in the, in this material world. And we can see that there's a lot of confusion and a lot of distress and a lot of unhappiness because people don't know about Krishna. So they're, they're certainly bewildered and they're, they're, they can know that presently, even though before they may have thought that I was happy, but they're not happy. Now they, have the, they can see that they're not happy, but they don't know where to turn. So where they're turning to is, you know, trying to elect somebody who's gonna help them or get out in the street and demonstrate or try to identify. And now it's so much more factionalized because you can see that, you know, there's, there's um, different uh, groups that are going against each other. So this particular time is a time of darkness. It's a real uh, time of darkness. And, um, so we in Krishna consciousness are most certainly, certainly fortunate 
to have this knowledge about Christian consciousness and about, we cannot be an illusion about the material world if we're actually taking advantage of the knowledge that's been given to us by our spiritual master. And these, these jiva souls, you know, they're, they're in ignorance of knowledge about their, their spiritual identity and, and their constitutional position. They don't even recognize God. And in fact, um, I saw one video, someone was interviewing people in the street and they, um, these were atheists and they were saying that, you know, no, they don't believe the existence of God and that someone would have to prove it to them like that. They were talking like that, but um, we know that uh, only by hearing the, 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 Transcendental knowledge of Krishna consciousness can we come out of nations. And those who are attached to the material realm certainly have to be in fearfulness because there's no, there's no foundation under their beliefs, their, their illusionary beliefs about the material world. There's no foundation. So if there's no foundation, then where are they gonna go? They're gonna just speculate or you know, um, think that this is temporary. In fact, now it's it's like everybody's waiting for everything to get back to normal. But what is normal? Just any of us in the spiritual world, there's no such thing as normal. It's, we're not in a normal position, even if it wasn't pandemic time. Normal cannot be defined in the material world because there's no all the living entities who are spiritual, spiritual beings and who are um, eternal servants of Krishna and who need to recognize Krishna as the Supreme cannot be normal here in the material world. It's like saying, if you put the fish and take them out of the water and put them on the land, this is a normal for him, but he can't breathe and he'll die. And as spiritual sparks of the Lord, the living entities have come out of the, the, the relationship with Krishna. And so they're all actually dying and, and not even realizing that. that. And uh, not, also not recognizing their responsibility and what's happening in the world with the killing of all the spirit souls who are in animal bodies. There has to be a consequence for this, this, this killing cannot go on continuously for years without there being a consequence that mother nature is gonna, you know, make some consequences because we're all under the control of the prakriti of material nature. So there's gonna be consequences. So they're attracted to the external features of the material world. And it's turned into, now it's turned into bewilderment and fear. So um, as we move on, so uh, Prabhupada says also here that knowledge is always highly esteemed. And uh, he also asked the question, what is that knowledge? So first let's deal with this knowledge is always highly esteemed. So in this world, mundane knowledge is high, highly esteemed. If you have 300 PhD letters after your name, everyone will, will worship you and, and think you have you know, so much information to share when actually it's all speculative mundane knowledge. But because, you know, they have the letters after their name and because people are easily cheated, then it's like, uh, as Prabhupada said, and I don't know if it's the Nectar Instruction or I think it was the Nectar Instruction or, yeah, about these, these, people who are supposed to have so much knowledge are just like snakes who are wearing a jewel in their, on their hood. They're giving out false information and they're killing the people's spirit, their spiritual growth. 
So then Prabhupada says, and what is that knowledge? Perfect knowledge is achieved when one surrenders unto Krishna. So we are so fortunate. We've also been through so many births, so many deaths. And now we've come to our good fortune given by our spiritual master. So this is back to this about how, how this knowledge is, we know in, in let's see. Oh, one more thing before I leave this about what knowledge is esteemed, you know, so we can see that even those who have read the Bhagavad Gita, who have supposedly studied the Bhagavad Gita, they still don't come to the correct conclusion. And even though the Bhagavad Gita has been out among the scholars for so long, until Srila Prabhupada came and actually distributed this Bhagavad Gita as it is, there were no devotees being made. And in fact, some of the scholars were talking about uh, the unborn in Krishna. And what does it say here? Um, it says perfect knowledge is achieved when surren one surrenders unto Krishna. It doesn't say when one surrenders unto the unborn Krishna. So these mental speculators, you know, these um, supposedly intellectuals, so it's supposed to be interpreting the Bhagavad Gita have no idea whatsoever what the Bhagavad Gita is actually about and what is the conclusion of the Bhagavad Gita. And we all know the conclusion throughout the Bhagavad Gita that we just surrender unto Krishna. That's it. We surrender unto Krishna. We give our lives to Krishna. Everything we do should be given to Krishna. Um, so, <clears throat> so what is the first thing we need to do? We need to surrender unto one who knows the Bhagavad Gita, because that's the only way we will be able to um, understand the Bhagavad Gita and what it's actually saying. And we know in chapter nine, this, this nine two, when it says that um, this is the king of knowledge, Raja Vidya, Raja Guyam, this is the, and, um, and it's joyfully performed. So this is the king of education, this knowledge that, that brings light into our heart. In fact, when we, we speak, we, we talk about the spiritual master bringing a torch. He opened my eyes with the torch of, of, of knowledge because I was wandering in darkness. It's like being in a dark room. You can't see anything at all, you know? You just stumble. You stumble along trying to find your way. That's an accurate way to describe it. You just stumble along, bumping into things and thinking, taking one object for another object, you know, because you're in the dark, you cannot see. And so the only way you can see is by surrendering to a spiritual master. Tadviri Pranipatena Paris Pashtena Sevaya Upadekshanti Tegyanam Yana Jani Nastapadarshanaha. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master, inquire of him submissively, and render service unto him. <coughs> Excuse me. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they've seen the truth. They've seen the truth and they can give it to you. If you want to hear, you have to have the qualification. Srila Prabhupada, I remember always, he would say that when he went to hear his spiritual master, he didn't completely understand what his spiritual master was saying, but he wanted to hear 
Still, he stayed to hear. And his spiritual master noted that. Bhakti Siddhanta said of Srila Prabhupada, he likes to hear. He just sat there to hear. You know, so the qualifications for wanting to hear, the qualifications have to be both from the speaker and the hearer. And we know that Vedic knowledge system is, is a deductive process. And, um, and it's um, received perfectly uh, by the disciples because the spiritual master also heard it from his spiritual master. So it's heard through the disciplic succession. Um, so the qualifications for, for someone who, who wants to hear is you have to be patient, you have to be submissive, you have to sincerely desire to hear, you must be anxious to hear, and you must be anxious also to learn the truth, and you must be humble because it's the only way that the spiritual master can impart this knowledge into your heart. You have to be humble and, and accept him as your Prabhupada says here. One can know God and one's relationship with God only when one actually meets a representative of God. And this representative never claims that he's God, although he's paid all the respect ordinarily paid to God because he has the knowledge. So we have to respect our spiritual masters as the representative and he's come here to bring us out of this material world. So he's imparting this knowledge, you know, and we can hear it through our ears. So these are the qualifications in order to, to hear, you know, this, this beautiful information about the spiritual world and who we are in the spiritual world. And we know the five subjects that are, you know, of the Bhagavad Gita, um, Prakriti, nature, um, the Jiva soul, the Supreme soul. I don't think I have them all. Um, so we have to learn, you know, how to, to hear. And, um, in uh, the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, um, it says uh, that um, Krishna, he personally eradicates the dense darkness of all misgivings by switching on the light of pure knowledge. And he does that through his, his representative. And uh, I wanted to read um, what are the results of this knowledge. I have to get, excuse me, I have to get the, my, my Srimad Bhagavatam. It's 1229. How, how about it talks about cultivating this knowledge? Because if we, if we just read the knowledge, but we don't apply it to our lives, then what's the point? It, it means we're just collecting the spiritual information, but we're not. Um, actually um, seeing whenever we get into so, any situation, seeing how it applies in this situation that I'm in. You know? And Krishna will, if we're actually seeking that knowledge, then whatever we pick up to read, if we pick up the Gita, if we pick up the Srimad Bhagavatam, then that information will, will automatically come to us because we sincerely want to hear about you know, uh, what is our situation? What is our realization about the situation we may be in at any particular time? Because we're gonna get challenges as we try to progress on this path. And actually I heard today from a class, someone was saying about um, how Maya is a pure devotee, which means she's very, very powerful. And I think it's 714 uh, when it talks about um, how we cannot overcome Maya, that Maya is very strong. Mama Maya, how she's very powerful and very strong. So we, 
we have to be totally committed to, to reading every day and trying to chant nicely. And actually it, be, it becomes, it can become very difficult, especially when the mind is going here and there. I know I've, I've had the, so many times I'm having that experience when I'm serious about, okay, I have to chant my rounds. The minute that happens in the mind, you know, tries to trap you into thinking about the past and the future instead of staying in the present. So I heard him say that Maya is a pure devotee. So if she's a pure devotee and I'm not, then I have to be really a little bit fearful of her. I remember um, devotees always saying, Prabhupada said that if we're not afraid of Maya enough. And actually that actually really stuck with me when I listened to it, I was like, yes, you know, because it can be a struggle. So I want to read about how the results of this knowledge expands, our, how we can expand on cultivating this knowledge. It's on one, let's see, one, two, 29. And we also know that the, the ultimate goal of this knowledge to uh, understand Krishna, to surrender unto Krishna, and to try to please Krishna. The thing here in the revealed scriptures, this is um, 1229. In the revealed scriptures, the ultimate, ultimate object of knowledge is Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. So all of this knowledge that Krishna is speaking to Arjuna is for us. And all of this knowledge ultimately concludes all the way throughout the Gita. Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Hare Krishna, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Thank you. My lights went off. Sorry. Okay, that happens to other other speakers as well. Carry on okay. speaking. <laughs> okay. He is um, yoga. The purpose of performing sacrifices to please him. That's Krishna. And yoga is for realizing him. All food of activities are ultimately rewarded by him only. He is supreme knowledge. And all severe austerities are performed to know him. So, where's the one? Okay, in the which paragraph? One, one, two, third paragraph. Um, Now you need to unmute again. Is it unmuted now? I can hear you now. Okay. By such cult of knowledge, one becomes gradually prideless, devoid of vanity, non-violent, forbearing, simple, devoted to the great spiritual matter and self-control. By culture of knowledge, one becomes unattached to hearth and home, becomes conscious of the miseries due to death, birth, old age, and disease. And all culture of knowledge culminates in devotional service to the person of Godhead, Vasudev. Therefore, Vasudev is the ultimate aim in culturing all different branches of knowledge. Culture of knowledge leading one to the transcendental plane of meeting Vasudev is real knowledge. So we can see that, that this is um, knowledge that we need to, to, to cultivate so that we can also cultivate some of these qualities, you know? 
and also share it with, with others. And particularly at this point in time, as people are, are really suffering and are looking for, for some type of relief, some kind of hope for, for this um, pandemic has come down on the whole world. And we, as devotees, can bring light into the world. We have this knowledge and we can share it you know, with those who are in complete darkness and have compassion for those you know, who are suffering. And we I'm unmuted now. <laughs> yes, I can hear you now. If your okay. internet's if your internet's low, we can leave the video off. It saves your okay. bandwidth. Okay, so I turn off my video. Yeah, I think so because your it sounds like your internet's a little low. So if you turn off your video, then it'll save. Um, it'll make it easier to hear you speak. Oh my God! Okay. Oh my God, no. All right, I can do it. Just carry on with your class. I can start now. Hi, you can start now. I can hear you. <laughs> oh, okay. I forgot where I was. <laughs> Bad difference. I know. Okay, where was I? Um, okay. Mm. So this hearing process is where I think I was. But this hearing process, we have to hear from the um, qualified. Just like in Namashranya, when the, all the sages came to hear, uh, 
Shukar Goswami. They wanted to hear from him because they knew he was qualified. And Pariksha had also came to hear because he did. So you had both the qualified hearer and the qualified speakers. And there's perfect knowledge, it's perfect. There's no flaw in this knowledge because of its authority, it's coming down from the discipline succession. So there's no, no, no mistakes. Like anyone else who's speaking, we have the five, the, the, all the, um, the um, defects of imperfect knowledge, make mistakes, we have a cheating propensity, we come into illusion. So the only one who can give us is the spiritual master. What? Okay. You're on again. <laughs> I think what I'd like to do is just open it up for questions instead of keep going on and off. Maybe someone has something they'd like to add or they'd like to say in relationship to whatever I was able to um, speak about. Okay, so you can unmute and say something if you want to make a comment or add something or ask a question. Is anybody on? Huh? Is anyone on there? Yes, we've got about six listeners plus me who's also an avid listener. <laughs> okay, let's open up for questions. Good. Anyone have any questions or comments? Anything they'd like to add? Is anyone like to comment or make a correction or add something or share their realization because it's a good time to share our realizations it's a very deep time no Hare Krishna am I on you're on I can hear you they can hear you okay Would you like to add something? Yeah, I found something interesting. I just clicked on the Surrender Unto Me link and there's an interesting comment by Buri Jan Prabhu. I'll read that out. So he's, uh, he's saying that from this verse, we can analyze how knowledge leads to liberation as follows. Okay. So he, ah, so he says, um, there are three doers. The living entity is doer number one. If he has knowledge, he realizes that all bodily activities are automatically carried out by the three modes of material nature. Mm. Therefore, so therefore he can understand that the modes of nature are doer number two. You are breaking so the, up. The, the, the living entity is a doer, doer number one. If he understands that his, he doesn't actually do things and the body does things, then he understands the three modes of nature are a doer. Um, modes of nature consist of inert matter, however. They simply carry out activities which are desired by the living entity and san sanctioned by the super soul. Therefore, the super soul who only sanctions is called doer number three. So now we've got three doers, the living entity, the modes of nature and the super soul. 
so so this knowledge leads to liberation as follows we come in we become enlightened by actually understanding the interrelationships between the living entity the three modes of nature and the super soul this knowledge removes ignorance when ignorance is removed the living entity takes shelter of the super soul and attains liberation So that's the comment for this verse from Bori Jampur. Hare Krishna. Okay, your, can you repeat can you that? Yeah, I missed it. Slow. Okay, so, so we understand if, if we're intelligent, we understand we're not the doer. The modes of nature are actually making the body work. Yes. And then, and then by our intelligence, we can work out that, that the modes of nature are actually inert. So the modes of nature only do what is willed by the living entity and sanctioned by the super soul. So yes. that, brings in, that brings in the third doer, who's the super soul. Yes. And, and then liberation uh, it results when we understand the relationship between the living entity, the modes of nature, and the super soul. This, this is the knowledge that removes ignorance. And uh, once ignorance is removed, the living entity can take shelter of the super soul and attain liberation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, you're back again. Yes. <laughs> Is, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, you know, at the end of uh, the previous verse, at the end, it says, therefore, the embodied soul by his immem immemorial desire to avoid personal consciousness causes his own bewilderment. Consequently, yes. although he's constitutionally eternal, blissful, and cognizant due to the littleness of his existence, he forgets his constitutional position of service to the Lord and thus entrapped by nations. And under the spell of ignorance, the living entity claims that the Lord is responsible for his conditional existence. You know, but but my my question. Uh -huh. Isn't it Harry Krishna? Harry Bow? Hare Krishna, yes. The soul is is acting by desiring. Isn't that what, what is pushing? The desire. Yes. Of the entity. Yeah. So it's, it's yes, desire. I, mm -hmm, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so that piece you just read out, I can put this on the screen for the others. Okay. The, um, the embodied soul, by his immemorial desire to avoid Krishna consciousness, causes his own bewilderment. So there's his desire coming up there. His yes. immemorial desire to avoid Krishna consciousness causes his own bewilderment. Due to the lit littleness of his con existence, he forgets his constitutional position of service. Yes, but it can still be confusing. Yes you know, to understand how the soul is acting when it says that the soul is not acting. Yes, of course it's confusing because we're one of the doers. We desire, and as a yes. result of our desire, things happen. And I've, I've also heard that the, the living entity is the one who keeps the material world going by his desires, isn't it? Yeah, ultimately, if if ultimately. we purify, if we purify our desires, some other living entity will go come along. Yes, to keep it and keep it going. And in conclusion, this is knowledge. 
Yes. <laughs> this is knowledge. Yeah. So under the spell of ignorance, the living entity claims that the Lord is responsible, but he is not responsible. So this knowledge, we know who we are, we know who the super soul is, and we know modes yes. of nature. Yes. And we know and we know the interaction between them. So our desire combined with the modes of nature create things to happen. Yes. But if we can purify our desire then and get to Krishna consciousness, then by seeking out a spiritual master. Yeah. Then, um, therefore, one has to seek out a bona fide spiritual master and under him learn what Krishna consciousness is. For Krishna consciousness will certainly drive away all nescience as the sun drives away darkness. We have to get to the purif purified stage of pure devotional service. Yes. He can know everything well if he cares to take shelter of the bona fide spiritual master. Right. So that's our key to success. Thank you for your input. I really appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for coming and giving the class. No one else is speaking. No one else is speaking. Okay. Thank you for this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share. Thank you very much. We have a thank you very much also from Madhu Goronga Das. He says, thank you for the wonderful lecture. Jai, thank you so much. Hare Krishna devotees. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. <laughs>